let's jump right in today we're starting off the nfc and we're starting it off with the nfc east now they sent a representative to the super bowl last year did it end in victory but the philadelphia eagles acquitted themselves very well 38 to 35 against the kansas city chiefs the most dominant team in the nfl over the past six seven years jalen hurts obviously going to be in that mvp conversation the Eagles are at plus 100 in odds to win the division this season, according to BetMGM. And if you guys, going back to our promo deals, if you want $1,000 back in bet credits, if your first bet misses, you have the opportunity to do that. Get yourself a BetMGM promo code. It's on WSN.com. $1,000 up to $1,000 if your first bet misses. Uh, plus 100 to win the division, over under set at 11 wins. I don't know about you. I do like them to win the division. And for plus money, I think it's certainly a good bet for a team that did just get to the Super Bowl. This is why I love football, because in football, the real America's game, you can absolutely it's easier in a way. It's easier to predict these like long season futures just because there's teams that can enforce their will on an opponent over the course of a season and win games. We're in baseball, right? The worst team in baseball, the Oakland A's, is still going to win 40 games. Like, it's not a lot, but it's still 40 games, right? In basketball, the Miami Heat can play with anyone if they make their threes. But in football, consistency and power and domination, especially in the trenches, wins games. That's where the Eagles shine. The Philadelphia Bulldogs right now, they got the whole freaking Georgia defense. They're very good in the trenches on both sides, and they have Jalen Hurts. I take them to win the division. I take them to go over their uh, 11 wins because I can't trust the Cowboys. The Giants still are getting better and better, but they're not there yet. And the Commanders, Grant, they're terrible. To be honest with you, they're not a good football team. Yeah, I am a little not. – I'm not concerned. It just hurts a little bit that you did lose Javon Hargrave in free agency. And, of course, he joins the 49ers because, yeah, they definitely needed help on the defensive line, right? But you get Jalen Carter in there, he's going to be good. Uh, obviously, like you said, Nolan Smith, you added DeAndre Swift too, because you lost Miles Sanders. I think DeAndre Swift personally is even better than Miles Sanders is. That offense is going to be as dynamic as ever. I do not see a way this team loses this division. And then over under 11 wins, we talked about this on one of our previous episodes. Because that number is not set at a half, you can get a push and get your money back if it doesn't hit. Granted, you don't want that to happen, but because that is the case, I would be more willing to go with the over. If it was 11 and a half, I think it's a little tougher, but because it's just 11, I'm definitely going with the over. Yeah, I'd rather take them to win the division, but I do like the over of 11 wins. But if I had to pick between one of them, I'd just take the Eagles at plus money to win the division. Yep, I absolutely agree with that. Number two in line, the Dallas Cowboys. They are plus 175 to win the division. They're over under one game behind. They are at 10 wins. Now they added to Stephon Gilmore. You will know him from his time with the New England Patriots, obviously. Former AP Defensive Player of the Year. Also picked up Brandon Cooks to be their wide out. This is going to be Tony Pollard's first year as the full-time back. Ezekiel Elliott no longer there. and Still a free agent, kind of surprisingly. Uh, we just both said that we do like the Eagles to win this division. So obviously we're not taking them here. But as far as the over-under and maybe even mounting a challenge for the division title like they did last season, do you think that's possible? Um, I think it comes down to Dak. And Dak's more of a regular season quarterback, right? In the playoffs, he totally underperforms. He beat the Buccaneers and everyone thought he was back. But it turned out the Buccaneers were really not that good of a football team in the playoffs, right? So that that's kind of what it comes down to there. I do think losing Zeke is going to affect this team. Tony Pollard's a phenomenal running back, but I liked how they worked together. And yeah, they, they had some guys, they still have some really good receivers. But it just really depends on how Dak Prescott consistently performs this season if he takes care of the football. But like, even though it's only plus 100 to plus 175, I do think the difference in talent between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys is massive. I do as well. And I do think the Cowboys defense is going to be phenomenal. And almost because of that, I feel like, I'm, you know what? I'm going to put Dak Prescott on the hot seat. I think this could be maybe his final season in Dallas. I, I do because throughout his career, he's had tremendous offensive lines. He's had great running games. He's had all the weapons at wide out that you could possibly ask for. If the defense is really good this season, because it was really good last year and on paper, it might be even better this time around. If that's the case, and the Eagles are continuing to get better, continuing to get better. This is a league that is dominated by quarterback play. While the years have passed, Prescott has slipped down the total, the pecking order, the totem pole, as far as the league-wide quarterback rankings go. He led the league in interceptions last year despite missing a quarter of the season. If he's a 15, 16, 17-ish quarterback, 
De- Jerry Jones doesn't really love him. He said numerous times, I hate that I paid him what I did. Jerry Jones is a guy who wants big name players. He wants the stars. I don't think he would hesitate at the opportunity to trade Dak if it came up. Yeah, Jerry has no problem getting rid of anyone he wants to win. And honestly, how old is Jerry? 80? 70, 80 something. I'll look it up. Yeah, look up look up how old Jerry is. Jerry's in his Jerry 80s. Jerry Jones is 80 years old. Born October oh. 13th, 1942. What's the average lifespan of a male in the United States? Probably less than that, you know? Yeah. A man in U.S. This is great. We're doing a little bit of research right here. 77.3 years. Hell, it's got to win one soon. It's got to win one soon. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, like I said, Dak, that's not, that's not I, I, don't, I, I don't have a lot of belief in Dak either. That's the thing. I don't, I don't think – I think we've seen the best of him. I don't think he has room to improve. No, I, I think I think Dak has hit his ceiling, right? He's going to throw picks. He's not going to win the big game. He's going to look really good at times. I don't think the Cowboys necessarily want to go full rebuild and draft somebody, but next year's quarterback class, I believe, is pretty good. Um, they're not going to get Caleb Williams out of USC. He's going to go number one, but I feel like next year's pretty good. I think there's some good good arms in that class. Yeah, I, I don't I, I would struggle seeing them. Maybe they would draft somebody and let him sit behind Dak for a couple of years. That's a possibility. That's what ended up ha- happening with Dak. He got it in a he got it in a preseason competition with with Romo, right? And Romo basically said right there, like I knew I couldn't compete with him. Yeah. Mac Jones to the Dallas Cowboys. Oh gosh, that's a that's a that's a win for New England, actually. You should be cheering for that. Mac Jones sucks. Bailey's happy no, so Mac better. Jones to the Dallas Cowboys. The thing about Mac Jones is he'll take care of the football. He'll be he'll be more careful with the football than Dak, and that's all they need. Just run the ball. He won't take care of the scoreboard. I'll tell you that much. Mac yeah, Jones well, is terrible. You don't need to score. They don't need to score. They need to play good defense. What are they going to go? Oh, seventeen and oh, they're just going to get a bunch of ties. No, they, they 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 can score a little bit. I mean, Mac's good enough to score a little bit. Hand the ball to Tony Pollard. That's a perfect fit. Like Dak Prescott, they're asking him to do too much. He, they're asking him to do more than he's capable. You know what? That actually isn't a terrible point. Isn't there some crazy stat when Dak throws it X amount of times, they like never lose, and it's like the under is better for them? Yeah. If they if they just ask Dak to do less and take care of the ball, they're good enough on defense to win football games, especially in this division where the Giants, they're not as good as the Cowboys, and then the Commanders really aren't as good as the Cowboys. So there's room for them to win by not lighting up the scoreboard, especially with a really good run game and good tight ends. Yep, that's fair enough. I, I can't argue with that. The New York Giants, they're a distant third in the odds here, plus 600. Their over-under is set at eight and a half wins. They have a really bad pass defense. They drafted Deontay Banks to help shore that up. Also, really no playmakers in the wide receiver core. They drafted Jalen Hyatt, speedy wide out out of Tennessee, got him in the third round. He's only fourth in the depth chart right now on ESPN. He's probably going to move up that list. I don't like the Giants. I, I think they have good pieces. I love Brian Dable as a coach. I have no faith in Daniel Jones whatsoever. I think he's going to regress. I just still don't even think he was that good last year. I think people just bought into a lot of hype. I don't want my quarterback to be running fullback power every time we need to pick up a first down. You could say that about Jalen Hurts, but at least he was able to be explosive as a runner and as a passer. Daniel Jones had none of that. I'm going with the under here, and I am definitely fading them to win the division. No, I I would probably take the under, but I do think Daniel Jones, I think the, the Daniel Jones slander has got to end right now with you, Grant Mitchell, because Mr. Daniel Jones had no coaching for the majority of his time in the NFL. He gets a little coaching last season and he takes off. He looked really good. He was able to throw the ball. He was able to run the ball. He had no talent. Nobody, there was no talent here. And he's still the Isaiah Hodgins, Darius Slayton, Paris Campbell. You got Darren Waller. He doesn't have a lot of receiver talent. They're not in good shape there. They need to go out and sign a big name receiver because that would help him a lot. But I I do think he's going to get better and better. He threw 15 touchdowns last year. That's not a good season. Because they didn't throw the ball, Grant. Like they they, they didn't they didn't have because he can't throw throw the ball. No, because they didn't have guys to throw the ball. He can run. He can throw. He can do it all. They don't have guys. And you have Saquon Barkley too. You want to hand the ball to Saquon the whole time. Just make make Daniel Jones a, a, an H back. Make, make no. what's the put him in the wishbone offense. Do something Daniel like Jones that. Has a freaking cannon, Grant. He can a, a cannon. Up. <laughs> he has a cannon. A, he, he has a balloon cannon. The thing used to inflate a balloon. <laughs> he has a cannon, Grant. You know they 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 groom quarterbacks at Duke. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Duke and the New York Giants. That's a that's a real powerhouse duo for quarterbacks. He had no coaching though. Like he, I don't think he deserved to be a first round draft pick. But the way he got thrown into the league, like imagine if your boss just changes every freaking two months. Not easy. Okay, but his boss wasn't changing. His boss just kind of sucked. Like, <laughs> you know, he got a new boss. He, he got a new boss every every season, basically. All right. I mean, who, like, who are his coaches? Who are his coaches? Let me, let me, who are the Giants' coaches, Grant? Um. Oh Did gosh, Matthew? what was his name? I'm Giants. I'm thinking of the GM that they hated. I can't even think of their coaches' names. Giants head coaches. Let me see this. I gotta I gotta pull this up. You got right. it, it's, Tanner. It's Joe Judge, and then it was Pat Shermer. All right. All right. Wasn't. No, Ben McAdoo. He played for McAdoo, didn't he? Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, so okay. he's had McAdoo, Shermer, and Judge, maybe? McAdoo, then an interim in Spagnola, interim in Shermer, I guess, right? Yeah, all right. Joe Judge. What year was he Brian drafted? Jones. No, he was drafted in 2019. Yeah. He was drafted in 2019, so he had Shermer, then an interim, then Judge, then Dable. Okay, so Madden. fair enough. He's been through his. He's been through. He's been through the 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 ringer with coaches, but I still don't think he's that good. And this is Wait. a year he has. Dable's the best coach of all those players. Go look at, he has go look at, yeah, and he did. He got a lot better from twenty twenty one to twenty. I'm saying this year. This year. This is the prove it year. Like this is this is where we're figuring out. Please, are you the guy or are you not? Man. Like give him give him time. He looked bad. He, go look at Joe Judge calling offense in New England and tell me how Daniel Jones was supposed to be good under him. Okay. Like I'm just saying, we'll revisit this conversation at the end of the year. That's all I'll say. Don't slander Daniel Jones. Whatever. You slandered my Washington Commanders. You called them one of the worst teams in the league. Here's something about them. And look, I'm I'm a Commanders fan. Everybody out there, I hate that I am. I just happen to be born in the area, and I picked it up. They're not as bad as you think. In seven of the last eight seasons, they've won at least seven games. That's not awful. Their problem is they're just mediocre every single year. They're never that good, and they're never that bad, so it's just burning your brain that they're irrelevant. That's what they are. They're they're irrelevant. They drafted Emmanuel Forbes, and this is actually a good question for you since you used to play football, obviously, and now you're a big offensive lineman, and we're talking about corners, but I still want to want your insight here. Emmanuel Forbes is 166 pounds. That makes him the third lightest player in the NFL. As a cornerback, is that can you su- survive at that in the NFL? Obviously, they're gonna have him in the weight room. They're gonna have him on a meal plan, but he's still gonna be skinny. Put DK Metcalf out on him and have him block him in the slot. I don't think he's gonna do too well. You gotta yeah, put some I, weight on. You gotta put 166. You can't can't play 166. No, and this is the thing. He led college football in man coverage rankings, but again, 166. Like, what happens if you're in a jam with a physical receiver? I just don't see it ending well. Yeah, I mean, college to the pros is different. Like, I'm running at him all day long. You know, if you're a safety, you obviously couldn't survive because you got to come downhill and make a play. But cornerbacks still got to be able to tackle in the open field, right? And yeah, he's athletic and all that. But I'm just going to take. I'm going to run sweep at him all day long. I'm going to find ways to neutralize him with my with my wide receivers. I'm going to run crackback blocks on him, you know, in, in trips and all that. I'm going to do a lot of stuff to. He's got to get in the weight room. There's yeah. offensive coordinators are going to be attacking his small size. Yep, I agree. One last question here that I do have for you about the commanders as well. Actually, this was an interesting thread that I saw on Twitter, and it was basically every year. Practically, not every, not every year, but most years, there's an MVP candidate that kind of just comes from nowhere. Mahomes' first year starting, 2018, it was him. Lamar Jackson in 2019. 2020, they didn't really have anybody. 2021, that was Josh Allen, the year he took the leap. Uh, last year, it was Jalen Hurts. For 2023, they just floated some random ideas around there. They had Jared Goff on the list. I think you could argue that a little bit because we've kind of seen it coming from Jared Goff based on last year. Like, Jared Goff was one of the seven best quarterbacks in the league last year. It wouldn't be a huge surprise if he was around there again. But some other names they put out there, they had Kenny Pickett. I don't think that's going to happen, but they had Sam Howell in that list, obviously, of the commanders. If there is a similar situation like that where there is a sneaky sort of MVP pick or at least a guy who really flies up the rankings, Sam Howell could be the one to do it just in theory. I mean, he's got great weapons. He's got two very capable running backs in the backfield, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, uh, Logan Thomas. That's a good cast of weapons. It's just, is Sam Howell actually going to be able to produce? 
Grant, the, Grant, that's a stupid question. The commies are going to win six games. Let's let's relax, okay? MVP, I'm, not, like, I'm not saying he's going to be MVP. I don't want that to be the case. I, I would have phrased the question differently. I would have said, is Sam Howell going to be reputable? I wouldn't have said M- MVP and Sam Howell. And then you mentioned Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, all these guys. Come on. They're guys who have taken the leaps out of nowhere. All I'm asking is Sam Howell, can he take that sort of leap from nowhere like other players have? I mean, it helps having his offense, the new offensive coordinator there, right? The so, enemy? Yeah, absolutely. It helps having the enemy there, but I don't know. I, I need to see him play more than anything. I just think that the commanders are just, you know, they, they live in this participation trophy era where it's okay to win seven games and be, like, cool with it. And then they also put up, like, metal pole statues of Sean Taylor. So, like, it's just a bad, it's a bad mix, Grant. Yeah, that Sean Taylor wasn't well, new ownership good group. New ownership group. Things are yeah, I mean, Magic Johnson's coming to town. Like, yeah. we're gonna start winning games now. The Lakers, the Dodgers. Look at what he's a part of. We're we're gonna win more games now. I just don't know if it's gonna be this season. They're plus one thousand to the win the division. I didn't even bother reading it because it won't happen. The over under is at six and a half wins. Tanner, which side are you falling on that one? Probably under. I mean, I think around six is a is a decent number. I just. They have a lot of talent, don't get me wrong, but in this division when you're playing the Giants who are better than you, even the Giants are better than them, and then the Eagles and the Cowboys. Like, realistically, the Eagles and Cowboys, one of those teams is going to sweep the Commanders. They'll split against another one. The Giants probably split. What's that? Three wins right there. I don't know. They're out of conference or they're out of division stuff, but I, I would take the under. I actually don't know they're out of division stuff either. So let me, I'll just pull it up real quick and yeah, we can yeah. close out the show after that. Yeah, let's go through uh, the commie schedule. Let's go through the, the, the commie schedule. All right. So are we just going to go week by week? Say yeah, we'll go week by week. Loss? I'll tell you win, win or loss for the commies. All right. I'll keep track. You let me know. Week yeah. one versus the worst team in football, the Arizona Cardinals. They'll win that one. All right. That's one for the win. At the Denver Broncos. They'll lose that. Uh, home for the Bills. That's a loss. At the Eagles, that's a loss. Home for the Bears. Loss. Uh, at the Falcons. Loss. <laughs> at the Giants. I'll give them that one. All right, so we're up to two. Home for the Eagles. Loss. <laughs> yep. At Demoral. the Patriots. Oh, we're winning that. No, you're gonna, you're going to lose. Realistically, yeah. you're not as good as the Patriots. Lost. We're beating Mac Jones into the ground. We're beating him no, in the submission. Not, okay, count as a win. Count as a win. You're still not there yet. If Bailey Zappi's in there, then it's going to be a loss. We can't right, beat Bailey Zappi. Count as a win. Give him three. Give him three wins. Give him three wins. At the Seahawks. Loss. Uh, home for the Giants. You're going to split against the Giants, so I'm going to call that a loss because I gave you a win. No, don't put that hand up. Wait, I thought you gave us a loss for at Giants. No, I, I gave you the first one. Okay, okay. At the Cowboys. Loss. Yeah, we always lose in Dallas. Happens every year. Home for the Dolphins. Loss. Uh, at the Rams. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a dog fight. <laughs> Since it's on the West Coast, I'm gonna say loss. The Rams are atrocious. Come on. They are, but they still have Matthew Stafford and they still have Cooper Cup. So. All right, at the Jets. Loss. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm looking at the rest of the schedule. And I'm home being like nice. For, home I'm home for the 49ers. <laughs> Loss. And then home for the Cowboys in the final game of the season. I'll, hell, I'll give them a win just because I feel bad for them. And they're at four. Like, I was All right, pretty, that's four and 13. <laughs> honestly, I was pretty nice there, too. Like, you could you could easily – I gave you the extra win at the end against the Cowboys. Like, Find me three more games. Wait, so that was four. Find me three more games that you think they can actually win. You, you know, I, w- I was I was leaning under before, but I'm definitely going under after yeah, looking at the like, schedule. Based on that schedule, find me three more. Holy shit, like three more games. Like it, that was, I was generous there. I would, I gave them a win over the Patriots. I gave them a win over the Cowboys, and they're still at four. Yeah, the Bears, like they could beat the Bears. They could beat that, like. Like there's teams on there that, that could go either way, but I don't see them winning four more games. No, I don't either. I think this is a team that's two, three, maybe even four years away. I do think Sam Howell can show improvement, and they can still be really bad, but he still shows enough to get the job next year. But, I mean, it's his first year. He didn't really play last year, and maybe he's just terrible, and they need another new quarterback for the 50th time in the last 10 years. 